Hi folks, this is Fred Met coming to you with a bedtime story. Uh, I was talking to Don Schweiss, and he's the a distant relative, cousin, whatever, of Frank Schweiss. And I got the understanding from talking to him. Uh, it was very difficult for him to be a law enforcement officer and be related to Frank. But Frank was an interesting individual in a lot of ways. And I don't know how, where to start and where to stop with him. But the truth of the matter is, uh, Frank was, uh, he was a ruthless murderer, uh, according to his cousin, or cousin, I believe, Don. He was, uh, his mother died when he was 11 years old, and he was into being a thief about that time, 11, 12 years old. He started stealing and doing things. Eventually he became, as I've been referred to, or referred to him as, excuse me, as uh, probably one of the most feared hitmen in the history of the organized crime in America that I know of. And, and definitely the one out of Chicago that stands out most. But Frank was uh, an unusual individual, like I said. He had some unusual habits, and uh, he was a signature killer. Uh, he liked to put one leg, so dead. We talked about a lot of different things, like uh, how uh, uh, Paul Gonski, uh, different murders that I knew about that he committed. Uh, Eugenia Pappas, his girlfriend, who was from Great Town. Uh, she was killed in 1962, just after Marilyn Monroe. But, uh, Frank was uh, uh, more than just a Grand, Grand Avenue crew guy. He got around uh, to California. Um, he was close to Joey Hansen uh, that was out in Phoenix. And sometimes there were people out in San Diego. But he also did some work for the people in New Jersey, uh, depending on who called him and what it was for. Either they borrowed him or whatever. I don't know what the story is. I really don't. But I do know that he was a very, very dangerous man. Dick Johnson, who uh, was an IRS CID agent, uh, tried to get into his uh, confidence. Uh, Dick was black. He was a black man. And uh, when he was trying to use Frank or find a reason to arrest him, basically Frank was uh, trying to run out the meat block and get a license on it, and then he would have control over it. Frank used to own the meat block on Wall Street uh, some years ago. But like I said, he's a very interesting individual in a lot of different ways. I, I could go on and write a book about Frank alone. Um, he was a bodyguard from Milwaukee Phil. Um, he was a lot of things, and he went a lot deeper than just the Grand Avenue Cruel. And that's kind of my bed story for tonight. But it was I enjoyed talking to you, Don, anyway. I appreciate it. And uh, to the rest of you folks out there that uh, have bought my book or uh, heard about it or whatever, thank you so much. I appreciate it. People I meet on Facebook, I appreciate it too. Mike, uh, you try and hang in there until you get your surgery, guy. And uh, in the meantime, uh, if you want to copy my book. The only place available at this moment is at uh, redwemet.com, R-E-D-W-E-M-E-T-T-E.com. And it's an autograph edition. I'll, I'll autograph it to you if you like, or just autograph it with my name, whatever you choose. But thank you so much, and I appreciate talking to you folks. And I see you on Facebook all the time, and I see the likes, and I like I guess I like the feedback sometimes, but uh, have a great evening, and God bless you.